Today I'm talking to Gabriel DeMarta from Surdo Prop. And thank you so much for joining us today, Thanks, Gabriel, sir. making waves out there on the social platforms. We are just so intrigued by what you're doing, your innovation, your creativity, you know, um, it's caught our eye. And we love to partner with creatives and people that are doing things differently. And um, one of the things that I noticed, um, it's quite, quite intriguing about your, um, your clever descriptions on your property listings. I just love that. Tell me a bit about that. How, how did that come about? Well, the real estate game is quite, um, I find it quite transactionary. And I was at a big brand for three and a half years and another big brand before that. And that's something that just made me a bit bored in the brand is that there wasn't that much creativity. I mean, you're operating under the spectrum of their brand and their brand values right. and their brand principles. And those are great. And they've been around for for ages. Um, so I, I partnered up with a friend from school. We actually went to school together in grade two. I and see. he started his own creative agency and he's helped me with these campaigns. So we have a campaign that is um, called Every House Has a Voice. And that's based off our overarching tagline, which is ensuring every voice finds a home. Pseudo means Amazing. deaf in Portuguese, as, as you know, my daughter's deaf. So we don't take what we say or listen lightly. We, we take it with a lot of interest. Um, that's what we do. We hear from buyers and sellers every day. And we really take that as a conduit and try and help them find the best situation possible as opposed to just being transactionary. Um, I had I a, an interaction this week, in fact, with a, a colleague from the, my ex-brand and she brought these buyers around and <laughs> it was next to a school, it was next to an open park, it was a gay couple, they didn't need a lot of space and I just couldn't fathom why she was bringing them through there without any real thought. She wasted mm. the seller and the buyer's time. Mm. Um, and I think that's naivety, but that's mm. where we try and take a lot more care in what we do. Yes. Representing sellers and giving their house a voice and then ensuring yes. that we listen to buyers as well. So it's yes. been a really good start and I'm glad we're starting to carve out some creativity within the space because yes. I think there's a lot of scope to, to do that. Yeah. Definitely. And it's definitely an eye-catching um, way of doing things and, you know, um, and it speaks to your buyer, you know, and it also speaks to your seller in knowing that yep. you're taking a more than just, you know, it's more than just selling the home. It's taking a really invested interest into the whole process. And that leads me as well to talk about that, that listening ear that you are giving to not only the seller, which is, you know, a very, very important part of your process, but as an originator, when I speak to a lot of agents, um, there's not a lot of talk or in-depth assessing that gets done with the buyer. And that's what I found so, so enlightening okay. with, with working with you, Gabriel, is because when we, when we interact and you're presenting that buyer to us, there's so much, there's that story that comes with it. You know, you dive in there. Tell me a bit about that process, you know, when, when you're speaking to the buyers that come your way. I think it's just about setting yourself apart from the field and, and that's where we, when I say we, it's not we, it's, it's me and Serta, it's my capacity as employee of Serta and then founder of Serta, so I guess we, that, that's the pronoun that applies, but I take a lot of care in what people tell me, I really do, like I was thinking on the way in here today, I was like dreaming of being like a hotshot agent in Dubai or one, one of these big cities. I um, love not, that. Not that there's anything wrong with Cape Town. But like yeah. when a buyer tells me something, I don't forget it. And I don't have a great memory. You'll ask my wife. I don't have a great memory. But those facts, someone telling me their personal story, I take that uh, to heart. And I think mm. that comes from my attorney days where I, mm. I did practice as an attorney for four or five years in Joburg before we made the Amazing. move down to the Cape. And that's a lot of listening. Um, yes. And less talking. Yes. So I'm, I'm learning to talk less and listen better and listen more so that you can provide a better outcome in a better time for your client because that's ultimately what will set you apart from any other agency or agent. Um, so yeah, Definitely. it's nice to see that, that you guys are noticing that. Definitely. Right? We love it. And that's where listening to your guys' story struck a chord with me. And that's why I like doing business with you guys is oh. that we have common ground that is this is your business mm. you don't work for a big brand mm. 
you're going to take my clients who I pass on to you and you're going to help them with the same level of care as I do and listen to them with the same level of care. Yes. And that's why I've been really, yes. really satisfied with the relationship oh, we fantastic. have going. And I look forward to, yeah, the to future. further oh. further transactions. Because again, back, awesome. back in my experience in my previous firm, there, there wasn't that sort of level of uh, personal touch mm. around things. It was yes. purely business, purely transactional. transactional and yeah. in the realm of residential property sales, you, you cannot be purely transactional, you know, perhaps in the commercial space. That's but right. in what we do with people's homes and with how much is at stake, buyers and sellers, um, that's yes. even more reason to be a lot more delicate. And, and we do pride ourselves on having mm. a really good bedside manner. Amazing. And we feel that and we love that. So <laughs> more of it, please. Okay. We'll send the matters your way. <laughs> yes. And... Um, Yes, yeah, so I, I see that, you know, with, with moving, you know, into your own independent space, you've really been able to, you know, um, become that creative person like we were chatting about earlier and, and really, you know, push the boundaries outside of being more rigid in the industry because it's a very competitive industry yeah. that we are in. Um, tell me a bit about the, the different things that you're doing. Um, well, I'd have a situation in my erstwhile position where I'd put on a LinkedIn post. I was starting to get more active on LinkedIn and I noticed that the market was turning. I was starting to get, and in the one week I got three calls from potential tenants who asked about properties that were sitting on the market. Won't your seller look at renting because they're not selling? And I, and I put on wow. a post about the market's turning and it was a, it was a way of giving um, confidence to my sellers to really push the price um, or, or the landlords to push the price up on rentals because there's an undersupply. All these tenants are now, well, three tenants were yes. calling me. Yes. And I put a post on LinkedIn and I actually got berated by my agency. And it, it wasn't like the most perfectly worded post, but it certainly wasn't defamatory. It just wasn't within that brand uh, guideline for that brand. Mm, I see. And that's something just that yeah. really like just stuck up my nose that I couldn't use my own voice. Mm. And mm. back to our tagline, ensuring every voice uh, yes. finds a home. Yes. Um, I'm able to use my voice now. Uh, Bella, my daughter, she uses her voice. She can't use it properly yet, but she's training. And okay. she's okay. she hears via cochlear implants. And she's got better hearing than a lot of normal hearing people because she doesn't take her hearing for granted. Right, um, right. So again, just listening to what Amazing. the market needs without having to be subject to rigid principles or values yes. has been really nice because to be able to flourish creatively. I love that. Um, yes. Has been such a breath of fresh air. Refreshing as well for us yeah. as well to see that coming through because, you know, it inspires others you know in the industry sure. and um, and also just touching on that the, the something unique that you posted on LinkedIn recently was about the buy being a buyer's agent and you know I feel that if you can help people on that side you know and bring that business into your model why not you know tell me a bit about the positives you've experienced on on that side of things um, that's been a really um, unexpected part of the business, the buyer's agency. Um, but that's come naturally through my network, again, based on the level of trust that I'm able to put out there and get from people. Um, Amazing. We've got a couple of clients who've given us specific buyer's mandates off of what they want to buy. It's either a specific property that yes. is not for sale, so we need to Approach. see if there's an opportunity yes. to make it sellable. And in that situation, the buyer will pay our commission. So it adds wow. value to their the, potential sale. Correct, yes. Um, and, and it's a full-time job finding a property. Yeah, it yeah. is such a stress. So to have someone that's willing to help you and you've, you, you've got the pulse of the industry, you know, you know, um, you can guide them in terms of what to look out for as a buyer. No one's representing them out there. 100%. You I know? mean, the agent works for the seller traditionally. The conveyancer works for the seller but has the buyer's interest at stake. So there's no one really in the buyer's corner. Once they're out there shopping, you know, we're in the buyer's corner in terms of finance with bond origination yep. that we do. But in terms of before they can, you know, actually progress with the stage of their purchase process, we're needing someone in the field, boots on the ground. Well, I think with so much information out, of, out there in the, in the open, and it's mainly through the property portals, Buyers are sometimes misled. So I've seen it with my network out of Joburg. Buyers will move down, 
start renting because mm. they're not ready. They want to mm. suss out the areas. And, and I've sent you a few of these clients who are now ready That's to right. buy. And they may have an opportunity on their doorstep right there that would suit them, but it's just not having the trust or the guidance to say, that is really good. I would buy that. You should look at that. And I'm finding Amazing. that that's becoming a bigger need. Mm. Um, yes, most of the information is on private property, property 24, and the different uh, property portals out there. But it's someone holding their hand and helping them navigate that. Right, right. And I've been surprised with the attitude on most agents who hold the stock. They've allowed me to share most times. Fantastic. Um, bigger agents, agents double my age. Uh, it's been really nice to develop relationships with other Love. agents Love and it's starting to come full circle that they've got buyers and, and that's how the market should be. Again, at my erstwhile firm, it wasn't like they was operating in a mm. silo where mm. I really like to collaborate with mm. my industry colleagues. We're all in this together. Of course, um, yes. But more so help the buyer and be in the buyer's corner. And it's quite an interesting dynamic at the end of the day because... And I had it once in my previous position where a colleague of mine was representing the buyer and I was representing the seller. And it's the ultimate negotiation because right. the agents are pulling yes. in the same direction, but also not in the same direction. Yes, to you've see got to meet that middle ground. Yes. As opposed to the seller's agent, maybe unnaturally pulling a buyer up and then maybe unnaturally pulling a seller down mm. to find a deal, mm. which is the mainstream of the market. Right. But um being a buyer's agent has certainly helped me get my network extended within the southern suburbs. Um, and that's where sending buyers to you guys to qualify themselves has been a real uh, fruitful, breath yeah. of fresh air. Yeah. And it's been fruitful yes, definitely. for us because I've you guys that. are handling that with a lot of care. So thank you for that. Eh? You're welcome, Gabriel. No, that's fantastic. Thank you so much for your time today. Pleasure. We've been, We've loved having you. Thank, thank you. you. Look forward to the next one. Let's do it. Yes. <laughs>